Hi, so last week I got this email from SoundToys. VST3 support is here, free update, SoundToys for VST3 is here. We're excited to announce the release of SoundToys version 538, which adds VST3 support for our entire line of effects. So let's go. Now reading a bit further in this email, VST3 support is available for both Windows and Mac OS and offers native compatibility with both Apple Silicon and Intel processors. We will continue to support both VST3 and VST2 formats for all products for the time being and this update is free for all users with SoundToys version 5 or later plugins. Log into your SoundToys account and download the installers here or on our downloads page. Now there are a couple of known issues still, notably one for Digital Performer 11, and they also have a remark about that some hosts do not automatically update VST2 plugins by VST3 versions, even though the VST3 versions are fully interchangeable with VST3 counterparts. Now I already made two other videos on this very subject, one about why this is also important for Cubase 12 users, which is because Steinberg is going to stop VST2 support in all of their applications. And the second video that I made was last August, in which I showed you the beta program for the SoundToys VST3 versions. And I didn't participate in the beta program myself because I didn't want to run non-released versions of the plugins. But now that there is a release, I really want to install it and make sure that it's working fine. So if you click on the link in the email, download now, it basically takes you to your account. And as you can see, I'm really only using two plugins of SoundToys, but one of them, the Decapitator, I use quite a lot. So I'm very happy that there's now a VST3 version of this. If you click on the logo here, it downloads the version as indicated. On the bottom left here, you can see that I just downloaded Decapitator version 538. But before I install this, let me show you a project in which I'm using Decapitator version 2 first. Over here, I have a bass track and I've disabled Decapitator on that bass track for now. And that sounds like this. And if I now enable the capitator on this track, you can hear that it has some distortion and is a little bit more edgy and has some more hair. Now, if you look at the version that I'm currently running, it's SoundToys version 537. And if I go to my plugin manager and type decapitator, you can see that I'm running the VST2 version of decapitator at the moment, version 5370. So now I want to install the VST3 version of decapitator and check whether this VST2 version in my project is actually replaced by the VST3 version with the same settings. So let's install Decapitator version 538, the VST3 version. Okay, so the first thing that I'm running into after I double clicked the Decapitator installation file is a warning by Microsoft Defender that an unrecognized app was started and that running this app might put your PC at risk. And the only option which you have is don't run. Now, fortunately, you can also click more info then it shows you which app you're trying to run and you can choose to run it anyway. Usually this kind of warning means that uh, SoundToys did not actually digitally sign the installation file the way Windows would like. But if you know that the file came from a reputable source, then you can still run it. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say run anyway. And then I'm getting the Decapitator 5 64-bit setup wizard. Now you have to accept the license agreement after carefully reading it, of course. You also get the usual warnings about the fact that you need to have an authorization for this plugin, the minimum system requirements, and that there's a change with presets between version 4 and 5, but I was already running version 5. So let's click next. Next, it asks me where I would like to install the VST plugins. And this is the VST2 version. And if I click next, I can choose which versions of the plugins I want to install. Now for me, I prefer to disable AAX because I'm not using any host that is using AAX version of the plugins. And I also like to disable the VST2 version so that I do not accidentally start using the VST2 version again. So I'm only going to install the VST3 version of the plugin. I go next and it shows you where the plugin files will be installed. So now installation is finished and it also wants to install the iLock license manager, but I have that already. So I'm just gonna finish this. So let's start up Cubase again and see what has happened. So I'm again at my base track with Decapitator enabled. And if I open Decapitator, you can see it is now version 538. If I look at the plugin manager, 
you can see that there's now one version of Decapitator, and that's the VST3 version. Also, if I want to select another instance, and let's go to the default set, which contains all plugins, you can see that there's only one version of Decapitator left on my system, which is the VST3 version. So that part succeeded. My project has now moved from the VST2 version of Decapitator to the VST3 version of Decapitator automatically. So let's see if it still sounds the same. Yes, I think the sound is still the same, which is to be expected, of course, but you did see that I had to turn down the output knob again. But I think that's probably my own fault because I left this little switch here set to auto, which probably means that it doesn't actually remember the output setting. I should have turned it to non-auto, in which case the output setting would have been remembered. So for all intents and purposes, I think I transitioned successfully to the VST3 version of Decapitator, and I will be happy to use it in projects that are coming up, as well as in old projects which will now have the VST3 version of this plugin. Now as for other VST3 news, UAD has now also released their Spark plugins for Windows, and this means that a certain selected set of UAD plugins, which is ever expanding, is now available natively without UAD DSP cards on Windows as well as Mac where it was available first. And the nice thing about this for Cubase 12 users is again that these plugins are now VST3 version plugins. And you don't even have to have a Spark subscription to use these. If you had licenses for these plugins before, which are now now part of the Spark program, you will be able to run them natively in VST3 format in Cubase 12 and other hosts. Now if you're still wondering why I keep hammering on about VST3 and VST2, you should check out this video in which I explain that Steinberg is stopping VST2 support and what the impact of that is for you. Have a look, enjoy and see you soon.